Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Hope you all are fine. Let's start our first hero which is First Year at Harrow by Winston Churchill. This is our second year English compulsory and we are on our first chapter from heroes. Let's study. So first see who is the author of this chapter. Full name is Sir Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill and he is one of the most influential personalities of the 20th century. He remained the Prime Minister of United King Kingdom from 1940 to 1945 and again from 1951 to 1955. And he played a very crucial role in the England's victory in World War II. He was an army officer, painting artist, historian, writer, and he was educated in Harrow School and Royal Military College, Sandhurst. Um, he wrote some noble books, uh, notable books as well. The first one was The Second World War and the next one was A History of the English Speaking Peoples. He wrote one autobiography as well uh, and uh, its name was My Early Life and this uh, autobiography was published in 1930 and first year at Harrow is an extract from this book. He was a wonderful orator as well and uh, several volumes of Churchill's speeches were published. Blood, Sweat and Tears won the Life magazine's list of the 100 outstanding books of 1924 to 1944. And uh, he was knighted. He was the, given the title of Sir in 1953. And he won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1953 as well. So now let's move towards our chapter. And we see the summary or the key points. Uh, the writer gets a chance to study at Harrow Public School. And he seems to be afraid of the examination. Uh, he is interested in history, poetry, and essay writing, and examiners, on the other hand, were biased in favor of Latin and mathematics. Entrance examination at Harrow Institute is there, and uh, Churchill went to appear in the entrance examination at Harrow, but he could not perform well in the paper of Latin prose. And how did he attempt his Latin paper? Uh, first, he wrote his name on top of the paper. Then he mentioned question number one and then he put a bracket around it as you see on the screen and uh, then unknowingly a blot and several smudges fell on the paper. He did not know where these things come from and he was so amazed that he kept gazing at this sad spectacle for two hours and uh, afterwards his paper was collected with others and put on the headmaster's table. And who was headmaster? He was Mr. Weldon. Let's see what sort of man he was. A man capable of looking beneath the surface of the things. Because um, as we see that Churchill had not attempted a single question, he did not do anything, he did not write uh, even a word on the uh, paper. Yet Mr. Weldon took a broad-minded view of his paper and uh, not dependent on paper manifestations mean uh, Mr. S uh, Weldon was the personality who was not dependent on the text or he rather by looking uh, at the paper by looking at the style he just judged by some way that uh, Churchill was able to perform somewhat good at Harrow so he granted him admission and Churchill had the greatest regard for him So, when he was given admission, he was put in the 4th division. As we see that students were graded in different divisions and um, the premier position holders went to learn um, other subjects, high subjects like Latin and Greek and then came the 1st division, 2nd division and Churchill was put in the 4th division as we see in the bottom. So, this situation was very much embarrassing for him as Churchill was placed in the lowest division. His full name was Spencer Churchill 
and the school list uh, displayed his name in the bottom and the starting alphabet of his name which was s it could not even benefit him much in the school list his name occurred at the third last position and the last two candidates didn't turn up so he became the last name in the merit and uh, now see um, that uh, there is a comparison between churchill and the bright boys the brilliant students learned greek and latin but churchill was taught only english being considered a dull boy churchill was taught english and he was not given a chance to learn greek and latin and the high things like that but he was considered a dunce or a dull boy and he was taught only english which which was obviously their first language and who was the teacher um uh, let's uh, read about the teacher who was given the task of teaching the dull boys english his name was mr somerwell and he was a teacher and uh, uh, what sort of description does churchill give about mr somerwell is that he was the most delightful man charged with the duty of teaching the stupidest boys mere english so he was a delightful personality and he was given a charge of teaching mere english to the stupidest boys mean to the students who weren't able who weren't capable of learning other things so this uh, teacher or this man mr somerwell knew his job well he knew how to teach the students so he used different colored inks to mention the components of an english sentence Uh, he gave them a drill daily it was a sort of drill to make the students learn english sentences so what did he do he just used many different colors uh, it may be markers or something he uh, used many different color markers to mention the different components of an english sentence and hence students learned it very well because he gave them this drill daily he wrote a big sentence on the board and divided um, this sentence into in its components and he give he gave each component a different color so he had his own style and his own uh, way of teaching or attracting the students so he gave this drill to the students on daily basis till students learned english parsing thoroughly english what is english parsing english parsing mean that the students learn the structure of english english parsing the components the division of the components of english uh, of english sentence so students learned english parsing thoroughly so uh, the next slide displays the benefit over the clever boys churchill remained in that grade for 3 years after his repeated failure maybe he remained in that grade for 3 years so he learned thrice more than an ordinary student even in he grew the structure of a british sentence into his bones he learned english so well because he was thrice given a, a drill as compared to an ordinary student so he remained uh, thrice in that in the same grade and he thrice got the drill and uh, till he became skillful enough that uh, the very basic structure of a british sentence got into his bones and in the practical life the brilliant boys were no more competent than he was even they had to come down to learn english to make their living so let's conclude uh, churchill became biased in favor of our learning english he would make them all learn english first then clever ones could go to learn latin as an honor and greek as a treat but he would whip students for not learning english so now let's see this conclusion why he comes on this conclusion uh, that why he becomes uh, biased in favor of learning english because when in the practical life in the after years he saw the clever students who had learned greek and latin in their uh, student life their ability was of no use in the practical life it was only english which they had to come down to to earn their living or to make their uh, living so as compared to those boys churchill already knew it because he had grasped the english structure very nicely so this thing gave him so much benefit in his practical life that he became biased he saw its benefit and he 
he just uh, became of the point of view that it was essential for all the students to learn English first because this is the thing that is useful in their practical life. So, um, after learning English in a very well manner, uh, the clever ones could go to learn Latin as an honor and Greek as a creed, but he would whip the students only if they will not learn English. So here he concludes and our chapter ends. Now let's uh, go to the exercise. Answer these questions. The very first question is, the writer says that the examiners ask questions which students cannot answer and not those which they can answer. Is the complaint just? Just mean? Is the complaint based on justice? Is this complaint right? Now let's see. The writer says that the examiner asks questions which students cannot answer and not those which they can answer. So is this complaint right? No. We, I think this, that uh, this complaint is not right because when a question paper comes, I think uh, it is made keeping all sorts of students in mind. Um, uh, it includes certain questions which are easy to attempt uh, by everyone and there are certain questions which demand the thorough study. So examiners mix up questions. There are easy and difficult both questions and if the students have prepared for their examination in a very good way, so they can attempt this paper. So let's, now let's go to the next question. What sort of questions are asked by your examiners? So again, our examiners ask both easy and difficult questions. The next is, why did not Churchill do well in examination? So uh, its answer is that Churchill could not do well in the examination because um, the examiner were biased in favor of uh, mathematics and Latin whereas uh, Churchill was in favor uh, rather his favorite subjects were history uh, poetry and essay writing he wanted to be examined in these subjects but examiners were not interested in the examination of these subjects so their will prevailed obviously and Churchill could not perform well in the examinations so the next question is how did he do his Latin paper so we have just seen in the slides that how did he do the Latin paper? He received his Latin paper. He just wrote his name on top of the page. And uh, after thinking much, uh, he wrote question number one. And uh, then he put a bracket around number one. And then he did not know what, to, what relevant he could write uh, on the paper. So he just uh, he was just looking at his paper and out of nowhere there came certain blot and different smudges on his paper and uh, the spectacle was so sad that he kept looking at it for two hours and when the time was over uh, the teachers picked up his question answer sheet and put it on the uh, headmaster's table. And uh, the next question is, Churchill was taught English at Harrow and not Latin and Greek. Was it a gain or a loss? So in the end, we see in the conclusion that uh, the brilliant boys were taught Latin and Greek in their school life, but uh, Churchill was taught only English. So when these all these students came in the practical life, we saw that Churchill was in uh, advantage as compared to those brilliant students because these brilliant students who had learned latin and greek had to come down again to learn an english um, sentence just to make their living because in the english society obviously they needed english uh, to speak good and to uh, write good so as compared to these students churchill was really not at loss Next question is, what good did his three years stay at Harrow do him? So what was the benefit of staying uh, for three years at Harrow? The benefit was that the, uh, the essential structure of a British English sentence got into his bones and he became so perfect, so skillful in the use of English that in the later years it gave him much advantage. The question next is, in after years, how did the knowledge of English stand him in good deal? Again, the um, similar answer is there that uh, in the after years, the knowledge of English 
proved so beneficial for him uh, that uh, he really did well in his um, practical life as compared to the uh, brilliant students. So now the last question is, write an appreciation or criticism of Churchill's views in regard to the Latin, Greek and English and their value in earning a living. So critical appreciation or we can write a criticism um, in, the view, in, the, in the Churchill's views. So Churchill's views are, are these, that uh, he would make all the students learn English because he saw the benefit of English in the practical life. And uh, he saw that uh, the brilliant students who just uh, put their stamina on learning of Latin and Greeks, um, but this thing did not give them any benefit in their practical life because those students had to come down to learn English for, uh, to make their earning. So he says that all the students must learn English first and there and afterwards the brilliant ones can go for learning Latin and Greek but basically all the students must learn english this was his point of view so here our question and answers end and now we go to the next slide which exposes the words and explanations let's see first word is inhospitable inhospitable means uninviting next is invariably it means always next is fancied it meaning is liked next word is partial it means had a taste for next is display and meaning is make a show of next word is expose and the meaning is let light on bring to view broad-minded liberal discernment understanding reflection thought relevant to the point smudge dirty mark usher doorkeeper uh, slender thin small poor unpretentious unassuming dance fool components forming parts of something structure form so here our lecture ends and i hope you would have understood and you would have enjoyed this lesson so just uh, keep on taking its revision and must learn the synonyms as well thank you so much for watching take care of yourself allah hafiz